With ZocDoc, you can find the right doctor for you in your network and in your neighborhood. So go to ZocDoc.com slash VCG and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash V-C-G. ZocDoc.com slash V-C-G. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source ingredients, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash VCG. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash VCG to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Hey guys, welcome back to Violating, Violating Community, Community Guidelines. Guidelines. I'm your host, Sarah Shower. And your other host, Brittany Broski. Yes. And today, today, today is for all of the people that went through this with us mm-hmm. who have years of scarring on their brain to prove that they went through this. Uh, this is for all the Tumblr people out there who grew up on Tumblr, had a Tumblr, mm-hmm. went through all the different eras of Tumblr and the insurmountable negative effect it had on our brains yes. and our brain chemistry. So I've been looking forward to this episode for so long because I've been wanting, we've been like teasing it. A yeah. lot of stuff has to do with Tumblr. It was on Tumblr, Tumblr adjacent, fan fiction, furries, bronies. A lot of it kind of is concentrated on Tumblr. Um, so I've been really looking forward to this. This is going to be a very Britney heavy episode. So to all the Sarah fans out there, you guys take a knee on this one. It's an hour and a half long knee. <laughs> <laughs> just bruised. This just is, absolutely black and blue. Yeah, I'm kind of sad I missed the great smoothening. Yeah, you, you know, were. Of you everyone's were. brain. I feel like I missed out on so much, but the interface yeah. was just too involved for me. But you mastered Twitter. Twitter is just post and run. I guess that's true. Yeah. Twitter now is a completely different animal. I don't even yeah. know what's going on on Twitter. Um, but yeah, Sarah was not on Tumblr. You were... Copywriter. Yeah. I was a copywriter for some brands, but... Doesn't count. No. I wasn't with the in crowd. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You didn't serve. No, I didn't. You didn't serve in the... I was in ROTC. Yeah. The Tarmy. <laughs> yeah. Tumblr Army. Yes. All right. So, without further ado, I do have a little disclaimer. So, Stanley, our researcher, compiled this research. And again, he was not a Tumblr girl, okay? He did not live in the trenches with the rest of us. He was... Yes, busy having sex, being cool, smoking weed. All right, whatever, dude. I don't want to hear about it. I was in my bedroom looking at pictures of Benedict Cumberbatch with a flower crown on his head. All right, <laughs> and I'm. This is how I turned out. So, take away what you will from that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, with that being said, the research is going to be a little limited, but. I tried to add stuff that I remembered, but if I left any major events out or major trends or whatever uh, that were awful or were shocking, please drop them in the comments because I want to relive the glory days. And also, if you were not on Tumblr, this is going to be kind of a shock. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, hope it, thank you for coming along for the ride. And please read through the comments as well, because I'm sure you want to hear all the nasty, juicy stuff. So due to the size of the platform, it's also impossible to bring up all of the memes and internet impact Tumblr has had. So we'll be going over the early days of Tumblr, some major moments in Tumblr history, and some content highlights. And then also how I personally use Tumblr. So here we go. Tumblr. Actually, do you want to take it away? Yeah. I'll take it after that. All right, guys. Tumblr is a microblogging social network site founded by David Carp. Crap. (laughs) And Marco Arment. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Hey, clear your throat, by the way. <laughs> I just had some Jimmy John's. It was freaky fast. Um, <laughs> the interface allows users to post still images, animated GIFs, videos, links, quotes, and other text. Members of the site can follow other Tumblr pages that can be viewed on their dashboard and can reblog or heart other users' posts. As of July 2021, Tumblr hosts more than 529 million blogs. Tumblr for me was a place 
where like weirdos could be together. You could find a sense of community. You can share your interest and in art in a seemingly safe environment. Seemingly. Mm -hmm. Tumblr let art and creativity truly flourish, regardless of the subject matter of such art. And Tumblr was Rule 34's most talented home. And Rule 34, for those that are not familiar and are not internet scum like us, is defined as if it exists, there is porn of it. Yeah. It's Rule 34. Mm hmm. Tumblr was beautiful, funny, annoying, cringe, and terrifying at times. The human experience, truly, I would, I would really say. The mm -hmm. censorship of Tumblr was a dark day in internet history. To take a community that thrives off of expression and then to censor that, I think, is very wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, you're undermining the whole point of your app. Mm -hmm. It's easy to shit on Tumblr because the most vocal part of its user base are the most annoying people on the planet. But it was also a place where people could come together to bond over shared interests, learn about life, discover what it means to be queer, learn how to empower yourself as a woman, write a fan fiction, how to defend yourself, study tips, music recommendations. It was endless. Literally, if you liked it, it was on Tumblr. What do you mean how to defend yourself? Like in an argument or like... All of it. Against an attacker. Yeah. Like self-defense, um, logical fallacies, yeah. um, how to deal with like manipulators, all of that. The idea of you running just like a self-defense blog. Yeah. That's <laughs> just me. You like breaking like zip ties <laughs> on your wrist. Me running with the little, <laughs> little shoelaces. Yeah. All right. So uh, you can take the history as well. All right. Um, so the history. Founder David Crap. <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought God that. dumbass. Carp has been interested in tumble blogs. Tumble logs, short form blogs, hence the name Tumblr. Ooh, uh, for some time, and was waiting for one of the established blogging platforms to introduce their own tumble logging platforms. Right now, we're going after artists," said Mr. Carp. Before that, we were thinking students and young people, but it's much easier to target an adult who wants to express themselves online. Artists and producers have YouTube, and musicians um, are relegated to MySpace. This is so old. Um, yeah. They're the worst platforms. Tumblr is a natural fit. I wouldn't say MySpace was the worst platform, but... It was up there. It was definitely a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Wait, I got a burp in my chamber. Oh, you got it. Oh, no, I don't. It just went back down. Oh. Oh. Sorry. I had a tail. I know, I know. <laughs> All right, Tumblr was launched in February of 2007, and within two weeks, it gained 75,000 users. Armit, the co-founder, left the co uh, sorry. Armit, the co-founder, left the company in September of 2010 to work on Instapaper. Is that the precursor to Instagram? I have no idea. Whatever oh. it is, flop. Yeah. So in June of 2012, Tumblr featured its first major brand advertising campaign in conjunction with Adidas, who launched Adidas. Adidas, who launched an official soccer Tumblr blog and brought placements on the user dashboard. This launch came only two months after Tumblr announced it would be moving forward, moving towards paid advertising on its site. On May 20th, 2013, it was announced that Yahoo and Tumblr had reached an agreement for Yahoo Inc. to acquire Tumblr for $1.1 billion in cash. In cash? Which is insane because in 2019, uh, Tumblr was bought by WordPress for $3 million. God. I, that is actually, I don't even know the percentage decrease that is. To go from fucking 1 billion to 3 million. God. It's at least... It's at least 100%. <laughs> <laughs> it's on a Fedor song. Yes. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, that is insane. I imagine it being like a shady Vegas, like they're in some private room in Vegas and someone walks in with a, a briefcase clipped to their hand. Yeah. And they have to put it down and like do a little code and unlock it. And it's a billion dollars in cash Dude. just to buy like... Furries fucking each other online. <laughs> huh? Harry Potter fisting Snape. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, like, actually, like, what do you think a billion dollars looks like? Like, what room could it fill? Um, a billion. What what size bills? Hundred dollar bills? Probably. Yeah. How many? That's nine hundred ninety nine million plus a million. <laughs> that could fill up the Staples Center. That could literally <laughs> probably like a Home Depot. Yeah. Fit him in my trunk. <laughs> <laughs> Home Depots are huge. They are fucking huge. Lowe's are huge too. I know they sell desks there. Really? Yeah, you can buy a desk at Lowe's. Should we go to Lowe's after this? Oh wait, no, sorry, I'm thinking of Staples. 
Oh, yeah. Office Max. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I've always, I remember going to Home Depot and Lowe's as a kid with my dad and being like, it's so big in here. Yeah. And I recently went there to buy something. I was looking at Christmas decorations. Yeah. And I'm 25 and I was like, it's so big in here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a little girl. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I remember one time we were walking through Home Depot and there was this metal thing just popping out and my sister hit it like directly on her oh. forehead and she started bleeding and she looked hey. so cool. <laughs> bleeding in a Lowe's. Yes. That's the name of my album. Bleeding, <laughs> bleeding so, out in a Lowe's. Yes. Um, so on September 9th, 2011, the 10 billionth Tumblr post was Jesus made Jesus Christ. By Brittany Broski. Woo! Which is furry hole. me being like, God, I wish the Mandalorian would yes. <laughs> lick my hole from the back. You get an award and it's like <laughs> framed and like sent to you. I, I wonder what it was. I have no idea. Wait, something uh, like, God, I hate my dad. <laughs> Wait, it was celebrated with a script writing confetti on a user's dashboard. Ooh, I want to know oh, what no, this was. This was just on everyone's. This oh. wasn't the post. Here was the 10 billionth post. Which would be like Mike Huckabee tits. <laughs> Just All right. So the features were uh, the dashboard. Obviously, this is the dashboard. It's the primary tool for the typical Tumblr user. It's a live feed of recent posts from blogs that you follow. Through the dashboard, users are able to comment, reblog, and like posts from other blogs that appear on their dashboard. Users are able to set up a schedule to delay posts that they make. They can spread their posts over several hours or even days. Um, this was useful, I know, for when I would read fan fictions and the author would post like, okay, new episodes or new chapters every two days or every week or whatever. I'm sure they would like spam write a bunch and then schedule them to go out. So mm. there's it, it being used in real time tags users can help their audience find posts about certain topics by adding tags which is just a hashtag if someone were to upload a picture to their blog and one of their viewers to be able to find pictures within their vlog they would add the tag hashtag picture and their viewers could use that word to search for those posts html editing was a huge part of tumblr because again these are blogs this is different than any you know your instagram account or your page is something that yes you curate but it's just a different world than a blog. So Tumblr allowed users to edit their blog's theme HTML coding to control the appearance of their blog and also the capabilities. You could add music, you could add, you know, whatever. Users were also able to use a custom domain name for their blog. And like Tumblr had us as 13 year olds coding websites. Yeah. Uh, this is, we just talked about, we just did an episode on memes, go listen to that. And we talked about how when you grow up around this, you never have to learn how to do something. Yeah. It just kind of comes to you. This is an example of that. Like at 13, I was coding websites. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do it today. Completely forgot how. Yeah. But it's like your, your young brain is still forming and learning and all your friends are doing it and you're giving each other tips and tricks and oh, try this and oh, oh I tried and saw this. It was really fun. It was really creative. So... Yeah, it's like with MySpace. I definitely like that shit was like I've not I can't do that ever again. Right. And I was doing that when I was like thirteen. Exactly. If yeah. you told me to sit down and like here's the HTML, I'd be like, I don't know what that I'd means. I'd be like, Are you threatening me? <laughs> <laughs> do you have my family? Yeah. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. I started taking AG one because I have ADHD and I often forget to eat. And so I take AG one in the morning so I can get all the essential nutrients and vitamins that if I do forget to eat later in the day, at least I have my bases covered. And by my bases covered, I mean I can function normally and be a healthy human being. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source ingredients, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all the things. All of them. So like I said, I take AG1 in the morning. Um, I do that. I take a walk and I make my bed because those are like this essential things to like make me like function better throughout my day. It's lifestyle friendly. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free or gluten free, it contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting good. It supports better sleep quality and recovery. It also supports mental clarity and alertness. It's the one thing with the best things. Athletic Greens uses the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third-party testing. 
It also costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. It's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. You're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash VCG. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash VCG to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. When she moved back to her hometown, Gia never expected to run into Jack, but when she sees him at the local dive bar, she finds herself drawn to him all over again. Want to know what happens next? Or maybe you want to know a whole lot more? Check out this sexy story and more on Dipsy. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. Find stories about an intriguing coworker with a British accent or hooking up with your hot yoga instructor. Radically inclusive, Dipsy has stories for straight and queer listeners like me. And 56% of stories are voiced by people of color. You've never heard celebrities like this before. Listen to stories voiced by Serranus J. Jackson, ER, Firemaster, and Luke Cook. New content is released every week, so in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. They also have soothing sleep stories, wellness sessions, and sexy stories you can read. I personally love Dipsy's wellness sessions. I've been advised that I should try meditating, but there's, I can't really find stuff that's for me, but Dipsy has such a wide variety of stories. I feel well after I listen to them. Oh my gosh, that's why they're called wellness sessions. Let Dipsy be your go-to place to spice up your me time. Explore your fantasies, relax and unwind, or heat things up with a partner. For listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash VCG. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash VCG. Dipsystories.com slash VCG. There was also inbox the inbox. Tumblr blogs have the option to allow users to submit questions, either as themselves or anonymously, to the blog for a response. And yes, I did get some of the most fucked up messages of my life through the Tumblr inbox. Like what? Just like whale fat. That's not a question. Yeah, I know. Whale question mark? Whale period. (laughs) And I'm like, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, And we touched on this on the, we did an episode on anonymous apps and we touched on this briefly in there, but there was a lot of self-bullying through the anonymous feature where I was like, you're such a slut, you're da da da, like you can't even, and it would just be an opportunity like paving the way for that person to respond to their own comment and be like, I'm, you can't get to me. Like I'm strong, you're whatever. It's like a show of solidarity with it. It's just so fucking weird. I'm going to say this. You're lying if you've never submitted something horrible about yourself. Mm. On Facebook, definitely have done that. And on Instagram, definitely have done that. Facebook? Yeah, the Facebook, like, um, the anonymous shit. Oh, Uh, Ask FM? Anonymous, whatever, yeah. But not, like, recently. I mean, like, I, like, any opportunity I could to, like, insult myself so people be like, Sarah, I saw what someone posted on here. Yeah, no, Sarah, you're really great, actually. Don't listen to the haters. I know. That was it. I was 14 talking about my haters. (laughs) Like, it's just me. It's me with a baseball hat on. (laughs) Turn it backwards, but insult myself on Facebook. With a fedora. Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there was a lot of self bullying for attention and like forced solidarity, I would say, uh, that came from this. So Tumblr has been noted for the socially progressive view of its users. In 2011, the service was most popular with the teen and college age user segments, with half of Tumblr's visitor base being under the age of 25. That's huge. Mm -hmm. In April 2013, the website received more than 13 billion global page views. And uh, again, the, the tagging system was a way to, you could index your own blog, but also Tumblr would add tags for you of like generated content that they saw and so a lot of the tags like you can search a hashtag and you can save a hashtag that you can like see updates on when something new for that hashtag would be posted i actually want to go through what i have saved right now i know one of them is hashtag Nicki minaj <laughs> <laughs> let me see one of them used to be hashtag adele um gaga ahs hotel Hashtag Beyonce, hashtag George Clooney. Oh my God, hashtag Normero. Did you ever watch Bates Motel? No. I was. But was these are all the hashtags you put on your individual content? These, no, these are all the f- hashtags that I follow. Oh. So when there would be an update on one of these, I would 
get it on my dashboard. Oh, I thought you were posting something and then adding all those hashtags. <laughs> and I was like, what could that content possibly it's look like? It's a selfie of me on my Android from 2011, <laughs> yes. like hashtag Nicki Minaj. <laughs> hey, twin. Normero was Norman Bates' mom and the fucking police officer from Bates Motel, and I shipped them. Oh, shit. I have so many. I follow hashtag Harry Styles. Leo DiCaprio collage. Went through a phase where I liked young Leonardo DiCaprio in Titanic. Uh, James Marsden and young Robert Downey Jr. Oh my God. Those are the tags I follow. Oh, and also hashtag after. <laughs> there was a, all right. I'm looking at you like you're going to get it. Yeah. After was that awful Harry Styles fan fiction that someone wrote about, um, and it was made into that movie series and they're on like the fifth movie now. Uh -huh. Dude, it's just awful. It all came from, that was Wattpad and then it was on Tumblr and all this. I followed hashtag after. I just, I don't want to talk about it. You want to read this one? Yeah. Uh, 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 okay, yeah. Um, point to the gay stuff for the gay person. Yeah. All right, guys, get off your knees. <laughs> <laughs> Stand up, cocksuckers. <laughs> get up, it's your time. So um, the LGBTQ plus content in community. Multiple researchers looking into Tumblr have found that the website is often used for community building and a place to explore identity, inform identity formation and gender expression for LGBTQ plus groups. Prior to the 20, you hear that gay people? I feel like most of you are gay. All right. <laughs> Prior to the 2018 adult content ban, transgender users posted their personal gender transitioning experiences, including photos of post-gender confirming surgery and the healing process. Many users felt that that kind of ability to be anonymous or cultivate the identity they were transitioning to made posting personal information to the website acceptable and safe. Yeah, that is one of the, one of, like, one of the good uses of it. Yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing um, that and it would be, they would archive it or index it in their blog as like, hashtag healing, mm -hmm. hashtag... Um, transition questions yeah so it would be kind of like a resource for other people who were mm -hmm. going through or looking to go through the same thing it was cool it was really cool and a lot of that unfortunately was taken down yeah. when adult content was banned and when it was 2018 or whenever it was mm -hmm. and that's really unfortunate and entire blogs were deleted yeah it just sucks from what i hear from the gay people who are who were like on tumblr it was not a fun time mm -mm. Dude, the discourse, if I can't even imagine. I know it's a, a lot of it's being like rehashed on TikTok, but I can't even imagine being there when it first started. Mm -mm. Miserable, insufferable. The epicenter, you just fell in, you know? Yeah. I can't do that. So while Tumblr's user base has generally been received as accommodating people from a wide range of ideologies and identities, a common point of criticism is that attitudes from users on the site stifle discussion and discourse, like you're saying. In 2015, members of the Steven Universe fandom drove an artist to near suicide over their artwork, in which they drew characters thin that are typically seen as being fat in the show, quote unquote. In 2018, Kotaku reporter Jita... Jita Jackson described the site as a joyless black hole, citing how the website's design and functionality led to fandom spinning out of control, as well as an environment which inhibited discussion and discourse. That is true. When you give an app the ability to like quote tweet or quote reblog or you know something like to to repost something and add your own commentary, mm -hmm. that's just you're inviting yeah. violence to yeah. be like some, where someone's like oh, all I want is rights and someone quote blogs it and goes shut the fuck up yeah. <laughs> like, that's just, come on man what are we doing it's also like we're raised in like a a lot of us are raised in like a largely christian culture where like issues are black or white like you're either right or wrong yeah and that's like really interesting to see how those people engage with intersectionality because like two things can be true at once but i imagine also as children when you're processing such like important information where like you're like this is either right or wrong because like that's how you view the world yeah and so like i, I can only imagine Imagine, like the extremes you would push like two yeah yeah the last thing you want to see is ron and hermione cannibalist yeah ca cannibalism arc yeah it's either right or wrong yeah <laughs> you're on the wrong side of history looking at cannibalism from harry potter hey. <laughs> 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 and i've always said that yeah so uh this is a little trigger warning for self-harm for anybody i would skip forward about two minutes um, in February of 2012, Tumblr banned blogs that promote or advocate suicide, self-harm, and eating disorders. 
Tumblr had a real issue with the romanticizing and glorification of self-harm. It mm-hmm. was actually fucking disgusting. The suicide of a British teenager, Tallulah Wilson, raised the issue of suicide and self-harm promotion on Tumblr as Wilson was reported to have maintained a self-harm blog on the site. A user on the site is reported to have sent Wilson an image of a noose accompanied by the message, here is your new necklace, try it on. This is the type of shit, that's what I'm saying. Like, people would just get anonymous DMs that say that shit. Yeah. Like, I'm going to come to your house and, you know, do awful things to you mm-hmm. if you don't delete your account. Like, you're worthless, you're useless. Just like teenage, these are kids. Yeah. I don't even know what prompts it to because it's like you're resharing pictures. What the fuck is so polarizing about that? Mm -hmm. In response to the Wilson case, Maria Miller, the UK's Minister for Culture, Media and Sport, said that social media sites like Tumblr need to remove toxic self-harm content. Searching terms like depression, anxiety and suicide on Tumblr now brings up a PSA page directing the user to resources like the National Suicide Lifeline and Seven Cups, as well as an option to continue to the search results. There are concerns concerns of some tumblr posts glorifying suicide and depression among young people the reality is if you're looking for that content online you're gonna find it yeah you know like these apps can try to put up as many safeguards and here's the helpline and here's whatever i've had some instagram stories be flagged for you know like hey someone said that you might need help yeah you okay yeah and it's just like because i said i'm gonna kill myself because i love harry styles like dude i've posted a picture of food one time and then it flagged (laughs) someone asked if you need help (laughs) god that looks disgusting is she okay (laughs) i literally that's it though is it's it's crossed this border of like it's not helpful Mm -hmm. i get the thought of you know we need to put in some safeguards here but it's just not helpful at all if you're looking for that content you're going to bypass all of those and you're going to find it and um if you skipped ahead welcome back i'm gonna wave my hand welcome back hey guys now we're gonna talk about porn (laughs) (laughs) would you like to take it away yeah so there was an adult content ban um i I feel like that was the day the world fell apart it was it was yeah it was a dark day in internet history (laughs) First One Direction breaking up. And now I can't jerk it on Tumblr. (laughs) (laughs) This house is a fucking nightmare. (laughs) I hate it here. (laughs) So in November of 2018, Tumblr's iOS app was removed by Apple from its app store after illegal child pornography images were found on the service. Tumblr stated that all images uploaded to the service are scanned against an industry database, but that a routine audit had revealed images that had not yet been added to the database you think they scan all the photos that's scary i i don't f- i feel like they're very much like tsa about it where mm-hmm. like they did like experiments where like 10 people like walk through with like firearms and only one person got caught right yeah i feel like that's like tumblr with porn okay so um in the wake of the incident a number of tumblr blogs particularly those dealing primarily in adult tagged artwork such as erotica as well as art study and anatomy resources were also deleted with affected users taking to other platforms such as twitter to warn others and complain about the deletions as well as encourage users to back up their blogs contents yeah i know that like i was working as a copywriter at the time and i was working on tumblr at the time and it was a huge Mm. thing that i really i tried to like make brands talk about but they're not going to talk about right but it was so huge i was like you're missing out on a yeah. fucking moment you can acknowledge it and get a bunch of likes yeah definitely <laughs> so tumblr subsequently removed the ability to date oh my god i have like a fucking okay tumblr subsequent was <laughs> Tumblr subsequently removed the ability to, dis- to disable Safe Mode from its Android app and announced a wider ban on explicit images of sex acts and nudity on the platform with certain limited expectations. Exceptions. Oh, my God. You know what this means is that all of my anatomically correct renderings of Spirit the Horse is a human. Gone. <laughs> Big, veiny, girthy dick. Gone. <laughs> You know when someone does like a house tour where they like film all the angles yes. of the house? Yeah. It's you around Spirit's dick. <laughs> There's like seven different. And if you lift up the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> you find another smaller shaft. Yes. And yes, the balls are hairless yeah. because horses don't have pubic hair. It wax. All right. Yeah. Tumblr deployed an automatic content recognition system, which resulted in many non-pornographic images being removed from the platform. Um, I can imagine. Yeah. And it's also stuff like that where it's like. There were so many movements going on at the same time of, you know, body positivity, fitspo, um, uh, gender affirming surgery, where it's things like that, where it may be considered 
an, an explicit part of your body, mm-hmm. but it's not f- sexual. Yeah. You know, like if you're showing stretch marks in a way to show that it's normal or cellulite on a high part of your thigh, you know, that's not implicitly or inherently sexual. It's like, this is my body. Yeah. And also how upsetting that just seeing another human's body, it immediately has to be sexual. It's just so, it created a lot of, obviously backlash but a lot of larger discussions of like what are we what are we doing yeah there are people that need to see certain things in order to feel better and tumblr has a history of being an incredibly toxic app Mm -hmm. so it was just upsetting all around well what's that quote that um i can't tell you the difference between art and porn but i know it when i see it right yeah so that's that quote yeah Mm mm-hmm All right, so the site was known for its popularity with adult content that attracted women and catered for other underserved audiences. Me. Right. (laughs) Yeah. In December 2018, about a month after it was initially banned, Tumblr's iOS app was restored to the App Store. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. It's time. We've got content highlights. And I went through... This is from my memory, okay? This Mm -hmm. is all the stuff that I was like, God, that was so Tumblr. So there are... First off, so, so, so many subcultures. So I will miss some, okay? Again, if you have them, put them in the comments. First off, there are aesthetic blogs. There were so many different types. And by aesthetic blog, I mean just like curating this sort of vibe for your blog. Mm -hmm. And there are tons of different ones. First off being hipster, you know, the like flower crown Coachella girl. Then there was grunge. Then there was the rich stoner aesthetic, which was uh, that kind of permeated not just Tumblr, but it was everywhere of the like Supreme and just posting pictures of weed leaves and like Snoop Dogg, Uh, Bart Simpson with bloodshot eyes listening to like Kid Cudi. It was just for no reason. It was just like rich stoner culture. And then just a little further, the druggy aesthetic, just pictures of Zannies and Coke and hundred dollar bills just like doing drugs and being rich and then there was the rich girl bbl aesthetic which is still around today super bad on instagram but this was like the era of fashion nova had just become a thing and it was like bodycon dresses and it was everyone wanted to look like a kardashian and it was rich vegas hotels and ysl heels and nails and you know glitter and all that it was like earth tones and it was very much that it was like you wanted to be a rich uh, what are those called? What are those girls called? Stay at home mom. Yeah, uh, Mrs. Incredible. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we're, uh, not es- not an escort. It's like the girls who go yachting. It's like you're hot and you're yeah. you're paid to be around rich men. Oh yeah, I don't know what that word is. I forget it too, but like slay. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we're at this hotel right now. That there, I went downstairs to get lunch, and there's a dress code for the fucking restaurant, and these two girls in bikinis walked in who were like twins, and I was like. And they turned Sarah away. <laughs> I literally said to go to Jimmy John's because of the dress code. Go back to where you belong. I was like, these Jimmy girls Jimmy John's. <laughs> 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 these girls aren't wearing anything. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually a friend of John. <laughs> they, spray me, they spray me with a water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> it's sparkling. It burns your eyes. <laughs> 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 Is that fresco? <laughs> Um, then there were typeface blogs, which were just fonts, just different types of fonts. Mm -hmm. Uh, rave girls. It was all like neon, like people giving each other those fucking, you know, that thing of like rave girls. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Peace, love, unity, and roid rage. (laughs) (laughs) And and what's the, what's the R stand for blur? Oh my God. There's so many ravers. Rash. (laughs) Rashes. Yes. Um, no, it's that thing of when you like hold candy. hands with another rave girl. It's candy, yeah. Yeah, and then you like transfer the beads to the, I don't fucking, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, very much that, very like neon, EDM, whatever. The retro cyber, modern clean aesthetic. It was like very girly computer theme. Like the Jetsons? No. Oh. Like, uh, I don't know, it's just very aesthetic. Let me try to. Like, um, like the 2000s, like cyber? A little bit. I can't fucking find it. I don't even know what I'm Googling. <laughs> <laughs> I get nervous and I Google stuff on the podcast and then I forget what I Google and then I freak out. Like my grandma. Where am I? Yeah. It was like this sort of thing. 
that's considered like cyber or whatever. It's very like. Oh yeah. I'm sick and I'm tired too. Oh my god. I know what you mean. Yeah, Tumblr aesthetic wallpaper. There's just so many. It's so good. God, I love Tumblr. Okay. Um. Then this was a weird one. Just mental illness as an aesthetic. Mm-hmm. It was the same sort of like Bart Simpson edits of just like. It was a picture of a cartoon character with just title uh, uh, text over it. And it would be like, I'm so fucked up. No one could ever love me. Mm-hmm. And it had 1.2 million likes. Yeah. It's just like, for some reason, oh, for some reason. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Doing good. good. <laughs> I'm with the boy. Hannah, keep that in. <laughs> We're in a hotel in Dallas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be so funny. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> What's up? Um, anyway, yeah, it was just these weird, like, I'm so fucked up. Mm-hmm. And then people loved it. Oh, my God. Halsey was a big part of that. Yeah. Speaking of. Didn't she start off on Tumblr? I think so. What was her? She had a, she was a fan of somebody and then ended up dating him. Oh, uh, dude. I don't know. I don't know either. Hey y'all, it's Brittany. Now, if you're a fan of it, sushi is incredible. But gas station sushi, hey, I can vouch, not so good. Finding the right sushi makes all the difference. The same goes for finding the right doctor. With ZocDoc, you can find the right doctor for you in your network and in your neighborhood. One that makes you feel like you're in good hands, you're supported, and you're heard. Even if you're telling them about your favorite sushi place. (laughs) ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. On ZocDoc, you can find every specialist under the sun, whether you're trying to straighten those teeth, fix an achy back, or anything else, ZocDoc has you covered. For any fans of the show, y'all know I'm a very moly person. I like to get my moles checked out. So I used ZocDoc to find my current dermatologist, and let me tell you, it's been a lifesaver. ZocDoc's mobile app is as easy as ordering a ride to a restaurant or getting delivery to your house. Search, find, and book doctors with only a few taps. Find and review local doctors. Read verified patient reviews from real people who made real appointments. Now, when you walk into that doctor's office, you're all set to see someone in your network who gets you. Go to ZocDoc.com, find the doctor that's right for you, book an appointment in person or remotely that works for your schedule. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc, and I am definitely one of them. It's my go-to whenever I need to find and book a quality doctor. So go to ZocDoc.com slash VCG and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash VCG. ZocDoc.com slash VCG. Okay, so the most important thing to come out of tumblr though i would argue is the what's now being referred to as the 2014 tumblr girl aesthetic Mm -hmm. which is god god (laughs) we'll never we'll never do something better than that it was the overall vibe of like it was vaguely british i would say yeah with a mixture of like american grunge and the overall vibe involves a devotion to american apparel the tv series skins the black and white filter cigarettes lord like black tights and doc martens a lot of black eyeliner lana del rey jean jackets and maddie healy of the 1975 of course and then there was subsequently the holy trinity of the arctic monkeys the neighborhood and the 1975 which was just world changing yeah and then oh my god isn't the lead singer of the neighborhood dating billy Ellis? dude that just came out i know and i am so icked out i how old is she 20 i know he's 31 i know that she's a, an adult legally but it, is that still weird? it's still a power to, and it's it's just such a weird thing because first of all i love jesse rutherford and that yeah. just sucks because it's like ugh. but second of all she has cited before that like she's always been a fan of his really like he's one of her heroes And it's just so fucking weird, especially with like this whole last album was about don't abuse your power. Yeah. And like, I should have known better, but you should have known better. Yeah. Like he's 31. Yeah. Also, I don't know if they're dating. They were just holding hands. I just Uh, don't want to. It's so weird, dude. Maybe. All right. Speaking of uh, being a fan. 
we have to touch on the fandoms of mm. Tumblr. That was such a huge, huge driving force of why this platform was so fucking awful. Mm. <laughs> okay. Again, there's so many. So if I leave yours out, please don't send death threats to me. Um, but these were the ones everyone wouldn't shut the fuck up about when I was on Tumblr. Number one is Super Who Lock, uh-huh. which is a combination of Supernatural, Doctor Who, and Sherlock. Did any, uh, so I know that it's a combination, but did like any of the shows actually mix in real life? No. Oh. It was never like a, that so sweet life of Hannah Montana. Oh, that's what I was thinking that it was like. No, I wish. Yeah. God, I, God. Actually, that would have been prob- probably like, fucking a nightmare people would have like maybe spontaneously combusted like that would have been a lot um but that was a huge i mean just like gay ships and then platonic ships and then fighting over is that ethical and then you know i this person but i just it was so much there were so many fan fictions there were so many edits there were so many it was drama. It yeah. was drama. There was a famous day in 2013 called Misha Apocalypse, which uh-huh. Misha Collins from Supernatural, everyone changed their uh, their profile picture to this picture of Misha Collins. This was the fateful image. Oh, it's a boy. Yeah, it's Misha. From I'm, Supernatural. I'm so stupid. I heard Misha and I thought, girl. Yeah, this everyone like changed their profile picture to this on April Fool's Day in 2013, and it was just like, God, y'all are annoying. Yeah, God, y'all are so annoying. But the thing is, is like they're all teenagers, right? Yeah, yeah. And he just loved him so much. This poor man, mm-hmm. this poor man, and the other one, y'all just really, you put him through it. Um, we have to mention fucking One Direction. I mean, like, what mm-hmm. would Tumblr <laughs> have been? If not for One Direction. One Direction was the crux of my online presence from 2011 to now. Yeah. So it was literally, Tumblr was inundated with edits, fan fictions, imagines, photo sets. Like, oh my God, they're here. This is the hotel they're staying at. Mm -hmm. This is Niall's favorite tea. This is da-da-da. It was just like, I learned so much information. Mm -hmm. It's, It's criminal. What is objectively more intense? A One Direction on Tumblr or K-pop, K-pop on Twitter? I think they're comparable. Really? I do. Oh, that actually just put it into perspective for me. I, th- I mean, y'all tell me what you think in the comments if you lived through it. But I think, I mean, Tumblr 1D days were something else. Yeah. I think there is more of an aggression towards other people uh-huh. on K-pop stand Twitter. But on Tumblr, it was like, it was aggressive towards the boys. Really? Yeah, it was like... I think we just loved him so much. Yeah. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. This is this is a discussion. Okay. Wild though. Um I'm like nervous now. The next one is Welcome to Night Vale, mm-hmm. which was it had a cult following and that's pretty much all I know about it. Was not a fan. Steven Universe, again, cult following, not a fan. K pop had its moment on Tumblr. Yeah. Um kind of really? like there was a big yeah like kawaii culture was very okay, fetishized yeah. Yeah. Know, as it, it still is um edits collages lock screens flower crown edits other stuff like that of just young teenage girls and, and just people in general just going ham yeah. on pick monkey canva pick collage like just editing these incredible and i used to make my own little collages of all my favorite people i would make one with like (laughs) and the next one is like this weird obsession with dilfs yeah just like men old enough to be my father and if not that older than my father yeah i was making collages of men that age and setting them as the lock screen on my ipod touch yeah it's like robert downey jr george clooney matt damon brad pitt Tom Hiddleston, I would make a collage and add little hearts and like, I love you and flower crowns. And I Wait, just like, like, like a collage, like of someone's eyes and then someone's ears. And no, then you a made collage a collage of being. like a book. <laughs> <laughs> you can't erase your, your heart. <laughs> 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 um, no, a collage of like a bunch of different pictures of the person. Okay. I went through an Iggy Azalea phase. Interesting. Made a collage of Iggy Azalea. Don't know why. Not your typical Dilf. Hey, not but she fits in there. Yeah. For some does. reason. I was having my Tom Hiddleston face really bad and then Iggy Zalia. It was just Tumblr was such a beautiful you could everything you ever loved was in one place at one time. Mm-hmm. 
Um, yeah, the Dilf thing was crazy though. Like babyfying old men. Like he's so baby. Yeah. Like he's so ooh. Uh, he's sixty. Yeah. <laughs> he's a full grown adult. God, he like has children. He has hemorrhoids. He has he has chronic back pain. <laughs> I'm gonna apply his creams for him. He wears one of those movers corsets. <laughs> when he Course. does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he does literally anything, <laughs> he used to roll out his back with a tennis ball when he wakes up in the morning. <laughs> um, then we have books. There was a big book fandom, Fault in Our Stars. Oh yeah, fucking remember that? That mm-hmm. permeated all sides of the internet. What Tumblr did to the Green family was so fucking cruel. They can be. Uh, simultaneously so thankful and so resentful yeah for what tumblr and the internet has done for their careers yeah <laughs> i don't understand i mean it's like the millie bobby brown ification <laughs> of someone <laughs> like it's like i don't know why I, I mean he's cringy but like they're not like that cringy to me i guess no Did should I- we start a rumor that john green's homophobic no <laughs> he is <laughs> no no he's not <laughs> yeah it's it's like um these poor people. Yeah. Yeah. All they wanted to do was share their art with the world. Yeah. And we said, that's your first fucking mistake. <laughs> weirdo. <laughs> Trying to connect with me. You're a fucking weirdo. Mm-hmm. So uh, other than like the John Green books, there was Hunger Games, Divergent, Twilight, all of those like kind of dystopian sci-fi books. Big fucking grip around my neck and my thigh. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. <laughs> Harry Potter. All right. I have seen some of the most hellish fan art yeah. of my life um on tumblr.gov uh-huh hey uh-huh. guys sorry we're staying in a hotel and we were illegally in a conference room and they just kicked us out so now we're in a different room so if it's echoey and dark and bad you shut the fuck up mm-hmm. this is the office room so if someone needs to print out a document if someone needs to print their boarding pass they're just going to be a featured guest on yeah! our podcast second ever guest yes. <laughs> All right, where was I? Anyway, the Harry Potter characters fucking each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, we have so many beautiful gems. I don't know if you can see this, but I'll try to zoom in on the screen. It's beautifully drawn, mm-hmm. like fan art, genuinely, of Harry Potter fans, but it's some of the most just fucked up. I mean, fist up the hole, like biting neck, spit on the face. Mm-hmm. Ron and Harry. <laughs> and Hagrid. And, and you got to throw Dobby in there and just <laughs> yeah. make it really fucking weird. Yes. But you know what? Human expression is artistic expression. Mm-hmm. And I'll never go back on that. All mm-hmm. right. Everything is art if you look at it that way. I also want to talk about fuck yeah blogs. If you were on Tumblr and you looked up something that, you know, let's say, I don't know, Miles Teller. Okay. I had my Miles Teller era in 2014. I looked up Miles Teller on the tags. Pulls up, fuck yeah, Miles Teller. Whole blog dedicated to Miles Teller. Yeah. My first introduction to the fact that there is one of those blogs for literally any conceivable thing you could think of. Yeah. Interesting. You want to look up something about Chernobyl, radioactive waste? Yeah. Fuck yeah, Chernobyl. Well, actually, that's pretty interesting. So I assume there would be like multiple blogs on that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's um, It was cool. They were blogs dedicated to the celebration of a singular topic. Could be anything. A TV show, a celebrity, a dessert. Each Fuck Yeah blog follows the same naming format, like Fuck Yeah Tom Hiddleston or Fuck Yeah Glee. Oh God, the trend was originated by writer Ned Hepburn with his Fuck Yeah Sharks blog started on October 25th, 2008. And that's pure and cute. Mm, yeah, I mean, Shark Week, like, everyone loves sharks. Like, if I was attacked by a shark, I'd be like, please, no one, don't hurt him. He was yeah. just doing what he, he thought. Hey, I wasn't where I was supposed to be. Yeah, okay? like, if I walk into someone else's house, I fully expect them to hurt me, right. you know? Right, yeah. when you keep your shoes on. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Another uh, crucial part of Tumblr was the fan fiction. And I don't mean, like, you know, imagine he pushes you up against a wall and kisses you. I mean, like novels these were novellas damn these were short novels sometimes full-blown novels that actual beautiful like beautifully written literature Mm -hmm. the fucking amateurs y'all were on wattpad tumblr was for the lyricists yeah for the waxing poets Uh uh-huh what is the longest fan fiction you've ever read there was one called all right guys there's one called rough day that's Uh a mandalorian fan fiction and it's about actually I want to look it up, but it's like in the hundreds of thousands of 
um, pages. Oh my God. Actually, I'm lying. That might be words. Here, one second. All right, so Rough Day has 188,000 words. Oh my God. And it's only got 17 chapters, but each chapter is like, I mean, it's like reading a chapter of a book. Yeah. Like it's, you'll be there for a while. Who wrote it? Uh, some woman online. Just bored out of your mind? Just horny, <laughs> horny. Isn't that crazy? The level of longing that women have and like men just like come in like 0. 0.2 seconds. Yeah. And I, it, you can tell too who wrote it and what state of mind they were in when they were, how they refer to, um, the penis, if you will. Yeah. Is it a member? Yes. Is it a cock? Yeah. <laughs> is it a dick? Dick is playful. Dick is childish. Yeah. He, he puts his dick in. I don't want to hear that. Yes. I want to hear his, oh God, what do they say? The like anatomical way they say it. Quivering member. Yeah. Quivering member. Um, it's just like, it's beautifully written. And it's, fan fiction is 100% an example of the female gaze. Yeah. It is viewing men as beautiful creatures mm-hmm. and viewing their body as art and all this. And, you know, when men write about women, it's, she boobed boobly. <laughs> yeah, she what did she say? <laughs> <laughs> it's very that. And yeah. so I enjoyed that part of fan fiction. And I know a lot of people, we need to talk about this. A lot of people grew, who grew up on Tumblr, that's how we learned about sex. I wasn't fucking in high school. Yeah. And even if I was, that's not sex. Yeah. You know, that's your being, sex is being done to you. Yeah. You are not having sex. Yeah. I was reading fan fiction about people that I liked, which is weird, but it's, you know, you like them. Mm-hmm. And you find them attractive. You're reading that and it's supposedly written by either older people Mm -hmm. or people your age who maybe know what they're talking about. And my full idea of sex and what sex was and sex acts came from fan fiction. Yeah. And I was, it was a rude awakening. Yeah. When I lost my virginity and I found out that sex is bad. Oh. Like usually between a man and a woman, usually it is bad. And it is a rarity to find a man who knows how to please a woman. And it's a rarity to find a man who respects a woman's body and what a gift and a, and a piece of art a woman's body is. And it's just like fan fiction really set me up for failure in that regard. I just like the idea. I mean, I know that everyone's body is a gift, but like, imagine like someone's like, you're about to hook up with someone. You're like, get ready to receive this gift. (laughs) That's what I say. (laughs) Look at it. <laughs> Pillsbury Doughboy. <Yeah. laughs> Can of muffins. Yes. Can of biscuits. Yeah. Uh, fan fiction completely ruined like romance. And because that's why it's a fiction. Mm-hmm. It's because these people, and I guess me included as a teenager, were not getting the romantic affection that they wanted. Yeah. And so you, you create it. Yeah. You know, in your mind. Yeah, I mean, Tumblr, like we said, was an escape for a lot of people. Yep. And that could be like a family situation or like Absolutely. a community situation or love situation. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, other than fan fictions, there were one shots and imagines, which were little short blurbs you could request that the user write. If you're like, and, and that would be a one shot would be Michael Sprouse fan fiction, mm-hmm. which I have to bring up. Yeah. And I never posted it on Tumblr, but I'm thinking about it. What is the, what is it? The Cole Sprouse fan fiction that I wrote was, he was in the military. Yeah. Okay. It's always military. Yeah. And he came back from war and he was traumatized, PTSD. Uh-huh. And I was the only one. It was, look at me. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't you. Yeah. <laughs> it was that. I tried to touch him and he would flinch away. It was like, there were levels to it. I was yeah. a skilled author. Was there like a portion of it dedicated to like the 4th of July and like being no. in bed with him? Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> having to hold him like a shaking chihuahua <laughs> dude my mom used to talk about that all the time because she was deployed like people like oh, can't she hates be- fourth of july huh yeah people can't be around fireworks i get that yeah and unfortunately fireworks are a big part of american culture mm-hmm. for me it's just visually overwhelming i get that i gotta leave the beach <laughs> <laughs> gotta just, leave the coles parking lot this is too much <laughs> <I> gotta- <laughs> <laughs> Disneyland is your living nightmare. Yes. Yeah. The sound and the lights, it's nighttime too. Yeah. Oh, you couldn't see them in the daytime. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> fucking fireworks during the daytime. <laughs> fireworks display at 8 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many bad One Direction imagines mm-hmm. that we really have to talk about if I can find them. Read a couple. Enlighten me. All right, here we go. Imagine seeing the 1D tour bus and you run toward it, but they run over you and you die. (laughs) When they bury you, they dance on your grave. (laughs) 
One Direction reunites just to fucking dance on your grave. One Direction uh, is it's a planned homicide. <laughs> Imagine this is a famous one. Niall Horan crawling inside your ear. You tell him to stop, but he is in there. Oh yeah, I'm picturing you know? it. Do you feel it? Is it supposed to be horny or is it just like a no, scenario? No, these are bad 1D imagines. Oh, oh. These are not real ones. The real ones are like, imagine Zane pushes you up against the wall and kisses you and tells you he loves you. Yeah. These are the ones that like, you always end up dying. <laughs> <laughs> a big plot point is you die. I push Zane up against the wall and I cover his nose and mouth. <laughs> <laughs> we both turn right together as I hold my breath <laughs> in his face. Uh, imagine I Dutch oven Zayn Malik (laughs) he dies yes (laughs) imagine Niall kissing you and then moving behind your ear kissing all down your neck you moan his name and suddenly feel a sharp pain in your throat Niall's a vampire and just put his fangs in you oh my god an Irish vampire is the most non-threatening thing I've ever heard of yeah I'm I'm gonna suck your blood (laughs) okay that's gonna happen that Irish? I don't know. Hey, Irish fans, <laughs> don't listen to this episode. Correct us phonetically in the comments. Yeah, please uh, give me some tips and tricks. Imagine giving Zayn a haircut. <laughs> shaving his head bald. <laughs> Imagine shaving Zayn's head in his sleep. Imagine waxing Zayn Malik's head. Oh, that would slay. Yeah. He's got some thick, dark hair. Oh. You know, he would be super inflamed afterward. <laughs> You're not supposed to wax people's heads. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why not? Because you'd be really inflamed afterwards. No. You ever seen those pictures of people with uh, sun poisoning? <laughs> yes, they yes. swell up. And they, you, they like touch their forehead with their finger and it leaves an indent. Yeah. Makes me giggle. Power outage with Harry. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Put on a pair of shorts. Paint your nails. I saw this. I saw this last night. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Natural disaster with Harry. <laughs> Imagine surviving an earthquake with Harry Styles. Who's surviving Ian with Harry? <laughs> Imagine sheltering in place with Harry Styles. Yeah, just awful. All right, moving on. Oh my God, the guys that kicked us out of the other room, they just passed by, but they were like, it looks like you're doing something important. We had that picture hey, of- we are. Yeah. I had a picture of Misha Collins on the fucking screen. Yes. And three separate people came in to tell us to leave. <laughs> <laughs> to be like, guys, we're really conducting an important presentation in this room. Dude, it just looked like a setup for an AA meeting. <laughs> yeah, that no one came to. Yes. And we're talking about Misha Collins. Um, another very important facet of Tumblr beyond the fan fiction and all that is porn. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes, it is still banned. You lied to them on whatever episode that was where you said it's coming back. Well, no, they relaxed some of the fucking... It's not like outright porn, but they're... Still banned. Okay, yeah, porn is banned, but there's still like some something scandalous happening. Can you see a hole? No. What can you see? Oh, dude, I just got really lightheaded. <laughs> I just got... Come on. Another really important part of Tumblr was the fake stories. It's almost as bad as LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Like LinkedIn is famously known for like people lie. Yeah. It's fan fiction for adults. Tumblr had incredibly fake stories. This is one. I'll sh- it's literally, it's a screenshot of a text post. If you can see that on the screen, but I'm going to read it. It says, oh my God, my friend had jury duty today. And when they told her to put her hand on the Bible, she started to scream, ah, it burns, it burns. And everyone was staring and she just laughs. And one religious lady in the jury even fainted. And someone like commented under it and said, if you think women can't troll, you're wrong. Oh my God. No Uh, rights. No no rights. All the feminism just left my body. No rights for you. That's just, it was, it was that all the time. It's like, oh my God. So I was just in the grocery store. No, you weren't. Mm-hmm. You haven't left your bedroom in days. <laughs> yes. You weren't at the grocery oh, store. Yes. Okay. You, you're truant. Yeah. <laughs> um, another one is eating disorder, Tumblr, which I mean, trigger warning, but if you lived through it, you know about it. If you lived through it, that's probably why you have an eating disorder. Mm-hmm. It's awful. Mm-hmm. It was encouraged. There were tips and tricks on how to eat disorderedly. Um, Fitzbo turned eating disorder. It was just awful. It was tips on how to be bulimic, where to be bulimic, how to be anorexic. It was awful. Where to be bulimic? Where to be bulimic. Like like when you go to the bathroom at a restaurant, like this is how you oh, yeah, yeah. vomit and you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Or even the thing of like you 
put food in your pocket so it looks like you're eating. Yeah. It's just anyway, another one is uh what is air? Everyone on Tumblr that was like the catchphrase. It's like a way to say, that's so funny I'm dead. Like, uh, oh my god, what is air? I can't breathe. Oh yeah, yeah. It was a catchphrase used by Tumblr users to identify each other outside of the website. It was a reaction similar to like, I can't even. Yeah. Or, oh my God. It's like hanky code for teenage girls. Literally. Yeah. Just from laughing too hard or being overwhelmed by your love for something. Mm -hmm. Whereas today I say, I'm going to kill myself when Harry Styles wears anything glittery. Yeah. And we're all like, Harry. Yeah. Yeah. And then I get reported and I get said, here's (laughs) the helpline. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) A follower reported your account. Are you doing okay? Yeah another one is just girly things Mm -hmm. so anyone who has lived and this is i mean everyone can really relate to this just girly things hey being weird oh i fucking love these posts yeah yeah and she is really fucking weird look at her she is absolute weirdo pretty girls don't make that face no you know she's a social outcast yeah bullied relentlessly (laughs) look at her mocked for conventionally good looks (laughs) (laughs) Who could ever love someone as conventionally attractive as that? Exactly. Good luck. Good luck trying to find love. <laughs> it was the just girly things, just the most random things. <laughs> yes. like eating sushi. <laughs> just girly things. Yes. Eating grocery store sushi. Yeah. <laughs> Drinking a Diet Coke. <laughs> um, pocketing fists of grocery store fi- <laughs> sushi. Yeah. Stealing from Walmart. Yes. Just girly things. And that became a post ironic meme mm-hmm. of people making fun of the innocence of like a just girly things account. Like the person who made this is probably so insufferable. Yeah. Because they mean it. Mm-hmm. Just girly things being weird. The thing is, is just there's weird. nothing wrong with being a girl or doing girly things. No. It's the style in which you are. It's, it's almost like you're saying that it's weird that I'm, you know. Exactly. Yeah, I'm unusual for this. Right. Yeah. It, it, or that this means you're different. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Just girly things started on Tumblr and then it went everywhere. Mm-hmm. It became that Twitter account that posted um, recycled content on Twitter. And then mm-hmm. it became, it was on Pinterest. And then it was on We Heart It. And then it was whatever. Um, social justice was another big part of Tumblr, which was, it was a lot of GoFundMes. It was a lot of fundraisers, very mm-hmm. community, like grassroots driven, you know, like, um, fundraisers for top surgery, bottom surgery, things like that. And, mm-hmm. and you would, it would be reblogged onto your dash and you would, uh, contribute to it if you could. Inspirational photo quotes are a type of image macro. You want to read this one actually? Yeah. Yeah. So this one says, she's changed. You can see it in her eyes, in her touch, and hear it in her tone. She's not the same, and she's never coming back. God, it's so fucking true. Actually, there are some times, like when I was in college, inspirational quotes did so much for me. Yeah? They actually got me through, like, a lot of hard times in my life. Wow. Dude, imagine having, like, that sort like, if an inspirational quote could, like, change your life. Yeah. Now, I can't- How weak-minded you are. (laughs) Dude, no, seriously. I can't- Someone told you, keep going, and you said, damn, that's so true. Holy fuck, man. (laughs) (laughs) Don't give up. I've got to get back on the saddle. (laughs) (laughs) Now I'm like, nothing, nothing can get me out of bed. (laughs) <laughs> gotta get back out there yes. take life by the balls yes. because tumblr user dick cheney farts <laughs> told me to so um yeah these were just snippets of lyrics and inspirational quotes in a block letter format oftentimes on the topic of romance or relationships set to various photographs of people or landscapes that are thought-provoking or sentimental uh and of course it became a subject of criticism and parody because it's easy to parody Confession blogs. These typically involved confessions relating to a fandom of some kind, and the confessions were just god awful. Yeah, you should never share these confessions. This was the the format of it. Hello, it's basically a picture of whatever character it is with a blacked out bar either over their eyes or over the bottom of the picture. And this one says, "I want Maid Marian to play with my balls." <laughs> See, that fox is kind of cute. No, she's sexy. Mm-hmm. She's got the, what are those eyes called? Siren eyes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got siren eyes. It's just alarming. <laughs> I've got police siren eyes. <laughs> Horse cop eyes. <laughs> Don't look 
me directly in the <laughs> eyes. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> <laughs> medically prescribed horse blinders <laughs> so people can't look you in the eye <laughs> oh my god yeah this was just the most unhinged shit that you could think of people would put these on you want to read the next one yeah i like your shoelaces is a code phrase tumblr users will employ to find out if someone they've just met and sus- Suspect uses Tumblr is really on the site. If the person responds, thanks, I stole them from the president. They are stupid as fuck. <laughs> they are, they and a are, confirmed they, Tumblr they, user. Yes. <laughs> no, thanks, I stole them from the president. They think they're being so quirky and funny. Who are you? God. And the first urban dictionary entry for the phrase was added on November 16, 2012 by user um, Whovian Classic Rock Fandom. Jesus. It was really t- all of it in one. <laughs> yes. It, Whovian. I, lo- I love Doctor Who and fuck. And Aerosmith. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Aerosmith and Whoville. Fuck yeah, Aerosmith and David Tennant. <laughs> <laughs> it was defined as a phrase used by Tumblr users to detect another Tumblr user in the real world. Yeah. If anyone came up to me and said, I like your shoelaces and I was wearing like Vans. <laughs> yes. Or yeah, Vans, the ones you slip on. I'd be like, you're an idiot. <laughs> yes. I wouldn't be like, oh, they're part of the secret society. I know. But also again. <laughs> the Freemasons of Tumblr. Yes. But again, these are teenagers, I guess. But I mean, there's nothing about being a Tumblr user that like you could get persecuted for. So you right. don't even need a code word. Right. Or code question. You could literally just say, you on Tumblr? Yeah. <laughs> that would do just as well. Yeah. Because they're not going to be like, heathen sinner. Right. Yeah. It became this thing of like, there was archetype of a tumblr person Mm -hmm. the dyed blue hair the septum piercing the steven universe shirt Mm -hmm. you know it just became very uh, that's our spokesperson yeah (laughs) that was one of them like the fandom one and then just like a 1d fangirl it was just all one direction stuff which was the side i landed on and then a weird five sauce phase be like five sauce no oh five seconds of summer five seconds of summer they opened up for one direction they went on tour together for one tour and people just lost their fucking minds all right it's here we have to talk about dash con you said it's here to like everything yeah because (laughs) these are all very incredibly (laughs) monumental points in my life that these people you fucking people Mm -hmm. you know DashCon was a convention organized by and for the core community members and audiences of Tumblr, including content creators and fans of a wide range of exceptionally popular subcultures, hobbies, and interests within the microblogging network. After successfully completing a fundraiser in 2013, the inaugural convention took place in Schaumburg, Illinois, the capital, during the second weekend of July 2014. <coughs> However, the event was largely marred by poor planning and mismanagement of the budget, the news of which quickly spread on Tumblr and became a source of ridicule under the designated hashtag, hashtag DashCon. Originally proposed under the name TumbleCon USA in March 2013, which sounds like just a youth gymnastics event. (laughs) Abby Lee Miller's there. (laughs) People doing cartwheels around a convention center. (laughs) And then just a bunch of Steven Universe fans yes. in the corner. Um, the name of the event was subsequently changed to DashCon to clarify its non-affiliation with the company. Shortly after that, the weekend passes $65 and day passes $30 to $50 for the convention went on sale. The inaugural event was planned to be held between July 11th and 13th in the Schaumburg Renaissance Convention Center in Illinois. One of the most highly anticipated events at the convention was a live performance and Q&A session by the staff members of popular podcast series Welcome to Night Vale. However, the event had to be dropped from the program as a result of misallocation of funds by the organizers, which drew much criticism from the attendees. And if any of you bitches went to DashCon, please tell me in the comments, please, or if you remember anything else about it. Some DashCon attendees also pointed out that one of the most memorable attractions at the convention was a colorful children's ball pit in an otherwise mostly empty room. Following the cancellation of the Welcome to Night Vale appearance, rumors began to spread on Tumblr that the convention organizers were trying to appease the angry attendees by offering an extra hour in the pit in compensation. (laughs) Soon, many attendees at the convention, as well as Tumblr users who were remotely following the story through the hashtag, began making mockeries of the ball pit as the primary attraction of the entire event. 
As the weekend progressed, the Dashcon and ball pit tags accumulated large numbers of posts on Tumblr, in addition to several side rumors surrounding the ball pit, such as its deflation, it being urinated in, or having a child conceived in it. God. And we'll put a picture up on the screen if you can't see this, but this was the ball pit. Oh my God. That's literally it. So much pee and semen. So much. I mean, a black light to this yeah. would bland you in prison. Yes. Federal. Yes. Alcatraz. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so there was an emergency fundraiser. Um, as the news of the disastrous turnout at the convention continued to spread on Tumblr, the hotel was in the process of shutting down the convention and kicking everyone out because they hadn't paid the bill to reserve the hotel for that long. It became known to the organiza- uh, it became known that the organizers had raised more than 17,000 US dollars in emergency donations to continue hosting the event at the venue. Combined with the moderately high admission price for $65 for the weekend pass, the emergency fundraiser soon prompted suspicion that the convention is little more than a money grabbing scheme. Just a bunch of kids and chokers and flower crowns and super who lock merch standing on the side of the road waiting for their moms. Oh yeah, you wrote this <laughs> to pick them up. And criticizing the poor planning of the event, the Tumblr blog at $17,000 was launched to offer a variety of alternative ways in which the money could have been spent instead. Going to college, paying for Tinder premium. LMA. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That was, a, that was a moment in history for all the Tumblr users. That yeah. shit was wild. And so this is an opinion piece by The New Yorker from 2022. And I just want to read it for a little bit because I feel like for anyone who was on Tumblr, this just kind of sums it up. Tumblr is something like an Atlantis of social networks. Once prominent, innovative, and shining, on equal footing with any other social media company, it sank under the waves as it underwent several ownership transfers in the 2010s. But it might be rising once more. Tumblr's very status as a relic of the internet is making it appealing to prodigal users as well as new ones. Tumblr CEO Jeff Donofrio um, told me, the author, recently that 48% of its active users and 61% of its new ones are Gen Z. That's the same demographic that Facebook and Instagram are concerned about losing. I would say they've already lost them. Mm -hmm. Facebook, definitely. According to the leaked Facebook papers, the company now known as Meta estimates that teenage Facebook users are likely to drop by almost half in the next two years. The platform became known as a petri dish of internet quirkiness. I love that. Mm -hmm. Great use of the English, English language. Cultivating subcultures such as bronies and the Harry Potter fandom. Tech companies often focus on anticipating the next disruption to their business model. They copy the competition and attempt to evolve as quickly as possible. Hence, for instance, Instagram's addition of Snapchat-like stories and TikTok-like reels and even fucking YouTube has YouTube shorts, YouTube community posts. It's all turning into the same app everywhere. Uh, D'Onofrio's tenure, by contrast, has been characterized by an unusual pursuit of preservation. This is a quote from him. We're not telling people how to behave, not telling them what to do or how to comfort themselves here, um, other than the pornography ban, which remains in effect. Mm -hmm. Other social networks have increasingly siloed users into a small number of optimized content types, short texts, brief videos, pre-made memes. Tumblr, on the other hand, is more open-ended, listing various possible post formats with icons at the top of its feed, text, photo, quote, link, chat, audio, video, possibilities are endless it's one of the few social networks where users can still publish entries that resemble blog posts that's true and it's also it stays true to its form you know it was created as a, a tumble blog yeah. the tumblr users that this author spoke to both new and returning cited a few unfashionable aspects that keep them using the platform tumblr's main feed doesn't shuffle posts algorithmically based on what it determines might appeal to a user it's a good old chronological river Posts appearing in the feed are undated and many accounts are pseudonyms, creating a respite from the frenetic exposure of other social media. Users spoke of the platform feeling disconnected from the real world, which is what we've been talking about this whole time. It's an escape. I go on Instagram, I go on Twitter, I even go on TikTok and I see shit that's upsetting. You know, yeah. like social media used to be a place where we go to to escape that stuff and now it's everywhere. Tumblr is, in my opinion, the last remaining place that has a sense of community that is free of that stuff. You know, mm -hmm. like you see very few things about politics. Well, depending on what you follow. Yeah. Um, it's a place to just enjoy what you like and to find friends that enjoy it as well. It feels disconnected from the real world. No president would ever try to shape world events with a Tumblr post. The best part about looking through your own archive is realizing that the internet 
ephemera you gravitate toward has remained almost embarrassingly consistent over the past decade. In the hyper-pressurized environment of social media circa 2022, it's rare to encounter a past digital self unless it's being dug up to defame you. It's very rare that we go back and like look at what we used to post just to look at it. You know, it's like usually used in a a slamming manner like look at what you used to do yeah and instead of just like wow look at what i used to like yeah look at who i used to be yeah look how far we've come sort of thing what makes tumblr obsolete for the moment are the same things that lend it an enduring appeal the fact that it maintains a following should remind us that we use social media services by choice no platform or feature is an inevitability oh hell yeah that's a good point i couldn't have said it better myself i know right i think that's a really i love the part about like Everything is preserved. Who mm-hmm. you were as a 15-year-old, which is scary, yeah. is preserved perfectly. And you can go back and look at it by month and see, oh, I liked this that month. And, oh, that happened that month. And, you know, it's just, it's really cool. Yeah. It's like a diary. It is. Mm-hmm. A diary of the worst thoughts you've ever had. Yeah. So a diary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, that about sums up Tumblr from my personal experience. Thank you for listening. I feel like I really did learn a lot. Good. It's interesting, like diving into your mind like that. It is. It's. It's. Um, I want to say it's a dark place, but usually it's not. Yeah. It's just really horny. Yeah. Posted an Instagram story last night saying, um, "Jack Harlow is going to be on SNL. I'm going to hump the pillow. <laughs> Start grinding on the pillow." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Loving you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for coming with us on this journey. If you like this podcast, please like and subscribe. Please follow us on YouTube, Instagram, uh, uh, Snapchat, Tumblr, Snapchat, TikTok, and um, rate us five stars yes. on wherever you listen to your podcasts. We love you guys. Yeah. And um, sorry about all the fucking technical difficulties. We're on tour right now. We're in Dallas. So mm-hmm. that's it. All right. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye.